Okay, next episode. So we've talked a bit about phrases. We've talked about the kind of verb forms you're looking for. You need to find a finite verb to work out that this is definitely a full sentence. We're moving on to clauses. So what exactly is a clause? You've heard this word before. A clause needs a subject and a predicate. Predicate has to have a finite verb in there somewhere. And hopefully then you go, hang on, that's the exact same definition we had for sentence. And clause and a sentence are kind of the same thing on some levels. But maybe a way to think about it is like a clause is like a mini sentence that you use to build a bigger sentence. So something like this, the old grey horses eat a whole bunch of vegetables. You've got your veggies and you've got your horses, subject and predicate. Together, you could call this an independent clause in that it's like just one simple sentence that express like it's a completely fine sentence. It's got the whole thing there. It's got the subject and it's got a predicate. Um, so that stands alone, completely fine on its own. So besides just calling it a sentence, you can call that an independent clause. Or you might also see main clause. They mean the same thing, at least as far as we're concerned. And this is a simple sentence. Just one clause, subject, predicate, full stop, done. Simple sentence. One independent clause. Uh, maybe you've got something like this. Uh, here are the old grey horses again. They're behind my camera. And here's my vegetables. The old grey horses eat a whole bunch of vegetables. So far, so good. And I'm watching them do it. So here, you've got two independent clauses. So each clause has a subject and a finite verb uh, with a predicate sort of built off of it. So in the first one, the subject's the old grey horses. The finite verb there you're looking for is eat. And then we've got another clause with the subject I and the finite verb watch. So we've got two independent clauses. And I've joined them with the conjunction and, the coordinating conjunction and. Now, when you stick more than one uh, more than one independent clause together to make a sentence, we call that a compound sentence. A lot of the times, a lot of the time, English textbooks will tell you to remember the acronym FANBOYS as uh, a bit of a, mnemo a mnemonic to remember the coordinated conjunctions that connect independent clauses. And fanboy stands for for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. The really important ones to remember are and, but, and, or, but, I mean, all six of them, uh, all seven of them, sorry, um, can't count, you might use in different, different contexts we might see. So you might have an example like this. I wanted to go shopping, but I didn't have enough time. Both of those are completely fine on their own. I wanted to go shopping, full stop. That would be fine as a sentence. I didn't have enough time, full stop would be also fine as a sentence. You've connected them with but to make a big sentence, but it's two clauses because you've got a subject and a verb in both of them. Here's another example. Do you want to go swimming or do you want to get something to eat? Again, both of those are fine on their own. Independent clause, another independent clause. Together, that makes another compound sentence. Or what about this one? There was nothing left to do, so I went home. I went home is fine as a sentence on its own. There was nothing left to do, full stop. Also would be fine as a sentence on its own. So again, independent clause, another independent clause. Put them together, you get a compound sentence. Okay, as we said, the definition is at least two independent clauses stuck together. What about if you've got a sentence like, because I didn't do my homework? So, is this a clause? Is this a clause? Do we have a subject? Yes, the subject is I, because I'm not doing my homework here. Is there a predicate built around a finite verb? Yes, the finite verb is did or didn't here. So that's all good. Does this sentence work on its own though? Hmm, I'm going to say no, because because I didn't do my homework is always going to be in reference to something else. To be relevant, it needs to be connected to some other context. So because I didn't do my homework, mm, I'm not allowed to go out. Or my mum's really angry because I didn't do my homework. It's got to have something else to give it context. Because it's dependent on something else, it's a dependent clause. You also see uh, the term subordinate clause used for it. 
So often you're looking for words like because, although, and if, words like that that often start these dependent clauses. So you might have these really high frequency ones, because, although, unless, if, since, before. There's lots of them though. The thing to remember is remember what it is, is that it's a clause that needs something else for context. That's what makes it a dependent clause. So I can't go out this weekend, full stop. That would be fine on its own. That would be completely fine. That's an independent clause. I didn't go, I can't go out this weekend because I didn't do my homework. So the red one is an independent clause. The blue one is dependent. Because I didn't do my homework is only interesting to us because it has the context of I can't go out this weekend. Or this, there's leftover chicken in the fridge. That's fine, independent clause. That could be a sentence on its own. If you're still hungry, if you're still hungry, your brain will say, if I just said to you, if you're still hungry, and then I stopped, your brain's going, no, 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 what? What happens? If I'm still hungry, then what? It needs something else for context. So that's how you know it's a dependent clause. If you set it on its own and it feels like that's not, there's not enough, we need more, then you know it's a dependent clause. As it's Friday, we're allowed to go home early. Just to muck around, I put the dependent clause first and that's fine. You can do that. You've got the dependent clause as it's Friday or if it was because it's Friday, since it's Friday, we're allowed to go home early. Any of them, you know. And you can think about this logically. It's all about this clause is not a full sentence on its own because it needs something for context. And then you can spot these dependent clauses. Right. Now, these are all complex sentences. When you've got an independent clause and a, and a dependent clause, it's a complex sentence. Some of the different types of dependent clauses you might have, a dependent clause could tell you how, where, or when you're doing something. Think back to the previous videos. What kind of word tells us how, where, or when you're doing a verb? Hopefully you think, hmm, those are adverbs. And if you remember, oh, that's right, there's this word adverbial, which means acting like an adverb, even if there's no real adverb there. So you can call it an adverbial clause. So that's a type of dependent clause. Something like Jennifer scrubbed the bath until her arms ached. The independent clause is Jennifer scrubbed the bath, because that'd be fine, full stop, done. Until her arms ached, we've got a subject, her arms, and a finite verb, ached. So cool, that's a, that's a clause, that's great. But it's dependent on the rest of it. So that's an adverbial clause. It's a dependent clause, which is acting as an adverbial to tell us about the scrubbing, how long she did it for in this case. Here's another example. The dog started barking. That's an independent clause, that'd be fine on its own. As soon as I turn the corner, good. As soon as I turn the corner is telling you about the dog starting to bark. What about here? Eagerly, my brother agreed to the business offer. Great, that's an adverb, that works. As dollar signs flashed in his eyes, my brother agreed to the business offer. That's an adverbial clause because it's like a whole clause that is doing the same job as the adverb. Even though there's no adverb in that clause, it's acting, the whole thing is acting adverbially. And often people will say, well, it makes your writing sound a bit more exciting, adds a bit more color to it. There's also a kind of dependent clause called a relative clause. And we use these to tell you more about a noun. Something like, do you know the man who is standing at the door? So that's a independent clause. Do you know the man? Because that would be a fine question on its own. Do you know that man? Who is standing at the door is telling us about the man. These are called relative clauses. So again, they're a type of dependent clause. They need the rest of the sentence for context. Or something like, uh, this is a man who I was telling you about. Which is the team that wears red and black? The woman who is wearing the red dress is my auntie Cheryl. Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's quickly recap all that. So a clause is like a mini sentence. A clause that can stand alone as a complete sentence on its own is an independent clause. But a clause that needs something else for context is a dependent clause. And when I say it's a mini sentence, it's basically the same definition as sentence. It needs a subject and it needs a predicate and the predicate has to have a finite verb there somewhere. So if a sentence is just an independent clause, that's a simple sentence. If it's two or more independent clauses, that's a compound sentence. If it's an independent clause plus at least one dependent clause, we've got a complex sentence. And if it's at least two independent clauses and at least one dependent, it's both compound and complex, because it's compound because you've got multiple independents, complex because you've got a dependent there.